All right, what's going on guys? So I know you know what you see on screen right now. This is something we've never done before here on the channel. I've been wanting to do these kind of tier list videos. You guys have been asking me to do these for a long time. And so today I kind of had an idea. I ask you guys in the channel discord server, which if you're not in the channel discord, I'll have that link down below what you wanted to see out of Elden Ring DLC. And you guys had a lot of ideas. You can see them all down there. I know you might not know exactly what we're talking about by the picture alone, but I'm going to explain it to you. And we're going to put them in a tier list. We're going to rank them by likelihood and just overall how cool I think that would be. Now, the first one you can see, we've got Godfrey down there. But what that's actually going to be talking about is the idea of the Badlands. Now, if you don't know what the Badlands are, basically, before the events of the game, the Tarnish, the player character's race, was led across the sea by Godfrey to a place called the Badlands. And they were cursed to do battle over there until they would eventually die and then be reborn and called back to the lands between by America and the Guidance of Grace, and this is where the game picks up at. Now, we really have no details about what exactly happened during that time of the Badlands. I think not knowing a whole lot is what makes it cool, is what makes it such a great place to explore, and with the idea of kind of time dilution, not really, uh, time not really following chronological law in the game, there's a very high likelihood that we could go back in time. Now, another thing too, in the game files, there's cut dialogue of Godfrey talking to our player character, and a lot of the things he say can only make sense if it's taking place before the events of the game. And so based on all that, I'm going to put the Badlands in A tier. Now, there was also a leak a while back that turned out to not be true, that the DLC was supposedly going to be called Barbarians of the Badlands. And even though it came out to be not true, a lot of people still really like that idea. And so, based on all that, I'm going to put it in A tier. I'm not going to put it in S tier just because there's not a lot of evidence in game that that is a, uh, a story element that's going to be explored further. And um, I think A is a perfect place for it. Now, something you're going to notice when we talk about a lot of these ideas is that several of them are going to overlap. And this next one is an example of that. So, the Eclipse. It's a little bit of obscure lore in the game. The Eclipse refers to the story of Castle Soul. If you remember the castle in Mountaintops of the Giants where you fight Commander O'Neill, there's a lot of storytelling that involves this event of an eclipse happening. Now, what that refers to and what was kind of going on with that eclipse is that it was a plot to revive Godwin and give him a proper death. That is something that a lot of people really want to see explored further because it's such a mystery in the lore. We don't really know if it's something that could still happen based on the events that we've seen in the game. Because number one, Mikola was taken. Mikola was likely the one behind the Eclipse, trying to spur that into being. And with him being in the state that he's in, it's not super likely that we could see this actually come to pass so for the eclipse i think i'm gonna put that in a tier as well but i'm not exactly sure what the story behind that happening would be now here's an interesting one gideon offnir's story if you don't know in the game files there's reference to an ending that we currently can't unlock that's supposed to revolve around gideon offnir's quest line and that's called the age of absolute order or something like that if you remember gideon's story a lot of what he's focused on revolves around the story of mikola now, we're going to talk about Mikola later on in this. However, we can't currently complete his quest line the way it was originally intended because a lot of the events that are involved with it are missing from the game. If the DLC were to explore the things that would bring his quest to completion, I think based on what we have in the files, we c this is a legit possibility. This is a very strong possibility. Like we saw in Dark Souls 2, where the DLC gave us a whole other ending to the game. I think Gideon's is definitely possible because we already have the groundwork laid. And for that, I'm going to put it in S tier. This is going to be our first S tier because I think it's very likely that whatever we see in the DLC can restore that quest line the way they first had it imagined. Now, here's my personal favorite, and I know I'm going to get flat because every single time I talk about these, I get haters in the comments. But PvP is a very strong part of the game, and there was a clear direction they were trying to take it that they never finished. These are the arenas that we can find all throughout the Lands Between. There's three of them. One in Kaelid, one in Landell, and one in, um, one in Limgrave. You guys know what I'm talking about. But there are whole sections of the map that are currently just completely inaccessible for no reason. And we're pretty sure they're supposed to be uh, PvP arenas. 
We've had them in all the Dark Souls games, and Elden Ring is notably missing those. But as time goes on, I think it's very, very strange that we still don't have them, that we still can't access them, but I have it in good standing that DLC is coming, and I cannot imagine they do DLC without restor restoring these Colosseums. It just makes too much sense. There's no reason why we shouldn't have these. There's, I can't really think of a reason why we don't already have them. And so for that, I'm putting them in S tier because I think they are by far the most likely on this entire list. And personally, these are what I would be most excited for because you, know, you guys know I love PVP and PVE. There's a lot of people that don't. I'm one of those people. And I want to see these Colosseums come to life. Okay, so this one's going to be kind of weird. So we've got a picture of the walking mausoleum here. And that's not exactly what we're talking about. So what you guys try to point out to me are the corpses that are on the inside of this are actually the unwanted demigod children of Queen Merica. We're told that from a ghost that's looking at one of these on, I can't remember exactly where. However, that's about all we have to go off of. The idea here is that these demigod children have some kind of story that the DLC is going to explore. And I'm going to put this in C tier simply because we have no more to go off of than that. And when it comes to Elden Ring, there's so many loose ends left in the story, and I don't think this is one that's really worth exploring a whole lot. Now, I got so many messages about this next one, and so I had to include it. Now, this is the possibility that we get no DLC at all. Here's the thing though, like I said before, I have it in good standing that we are going to, but there's always a possibility that it doesn't happen. When it comes to Elden Ring, a lot of people were kind of thinking, they announced the art books recently, and people are saying that because they announced the art books, we're not going to get DLC at all. I don't think that's anything to worry about. I think Elden Ring is big enough that they can have a dedicated art book to the main game and DLC each. Personally, I'm like 99% sure we're going to get DLC for this game. I think it would be stupid for them not to because of the huge success. But there of course is always that possibility so no dlc i'm gonna put in b tier because i don't want it i don't want it to happen however of course like i said it very well could happen now i gotta admit on this next one i don't know a whole lot on the lore side and this is the idea of a dlc surrounding the helfen or the afterlife in the lands between so if i understand this correctly the idea behind it is very close to Valhalla in Norse mythology to where you go here based on your prowess as a warrior and this is the sort of like heaven slash afterlife of the lands between. Now I don't know exactly how that relates to uh, Erdtree burial and destined death as a whole. Like I said this is a part of the lore I'm not really an expert on. However I think there is a really cool idea to explore here and I'm going to put this in uh, I'm going to put it in A tier. It would be really cool because like the other ones, like the Eclipse, like the Badlands, there's so much obscurity here that they could really do anything they want. Here's a cool idea. Since it is based on Valhalla, it could be kind of like an infinite fighting, you know, or an infinite battle. And this could be a, a good way to tie in a boss rush mode where we go into the afterlife and we reflect like in Sekiro, on the big bosses that we fought before. So I think that would be really cool and I like that idea a lot. Here we go now, a Glomide Queen DLC. Now this is like the number one biggest mystery in Elden Ring, the true identity of Melina. And there was no way they just hinted at this for nothing. There's no way. And I wanna know who she really is. I wanna know what this was all about. And currently the biggest theory regarding that is that she is the Glomide Queen. Which is kind of this enigmatic figure described in the lore. If you don't know, millions of people have made videos about this. It's like, like I said, the number one biggest theory in Elden Ring. The only problem I have with this is that it does take place after the Lord of Frenzied Flame ending. And of course, we burn the world into nothing. And so there's not really a setting to explore here. This could be another one where we go back in time. As for likelihood, I... It's, it's kind of rough, you know? Like I said, the Frenzy Flame setting really ruins it. However, I'm going to put this in S tier. Simply because this is a story I want to see concluded. And I really want to learn more about her character. Okay, this one's kind of weird. 
You know, this is something that really isn't based in the game a whole lot, but this is the idea of a DLC surrounding the deep sea. There's kind of this weird hint at a lot of things to do with the ocean in Elden Ring, specifically on the side of Godwin, because of his sort of mermaid tail. I remember somebody sending me something before the game came out that was this mermaid statue that was found in the files. However, I've never been able to confirm that, but there's always this running idea whenever people talk about DLC that there's some kind of sea theme. And I think it could do with the giant hole in the ocean right in the middle of the map that people found a long time ago. But like with the Dark Souls 4 leak that I talked about a few days ago, it's just something that From Software keeps hinting at over and over again that we've never really seen explored. And for that, I'm gonna put it in D tier because there's nothing to go off of in game. It's more of just like a fan wish than anything. You guys also told me about a DLC surrounding the Northern Mercenaries and us going to Kaiden, which is the name of their homeland. However, I don't think this would really make a good DLC, and here's why. These characters really aren't that important to the story, and aside from being mercenaries, they really don't do a whole lot else. There's no sort of paracausal nature to their story, which is... What I mean by that is like some kind of power to affect the whole world. And in a setting like Elden Ring, if you're not dealing with some great power, all the other great powers are just kind of going to wash that out. So personally, I'm going to put this in uh, D tier as well, just because I'm not too intrigued by it, and I don't think there's enough there for them to have a meaningful impact to the story. Alright, here's a pretty big hitter. A Godwin-themed DLC. This is one I would be very happy with, and here's why. We don't know what the significance of Godwin actually was. Why was he killed above everybody else? Why was he the one that became a martyr? What made him so special that his death triggered the shattering? We really don't have a whole lot to go off of. There's so many references to his character playing such a big role in the story, and not just because of his death. And this also kind of ties into the Eclipse like we were talking about. The purpose of the Eclipse was to revive Godwin and give him a proper death. So I'm going to put it up here on uh, A tier as well because this is such a key part of the story that is left unconcluded. No surprise to anybody, Mikola DLC is going straight to S tier and here's why. This is by far the one we have the most hints for in the game. It's a story that is so hyped up in the lore that Mikola is going to be the one to challenge the Outer Gods. He's the most fearsome of the Empyreans, and it seems like he was just so cast aside in the story. Completely unfinished. And in appearance alone, the way his hand is just kind of hanging there waiting for you to put a ring on the finger, that screams an entrance to DLC. But this would also tie in with the sixth ending because like I was telling you guys, Gideon's story surrounds Mikola. He wants to learn more about Mikola. And so if we explore Mikola through DLC, this would be the perfect opportunity to finish Gideon's quest. This would also have some serious impact in changing the story of the game because Mikola is basically becoming another god of the age. It's a perfect opportunity for him to replace Merica after we kill Merica and Radagon at the end of the game and get rid of the Greater Will, Mikola could come in and put order to the world. It makes too much sense. It makes perfect sense. And I think it would be a wasted opportunity if we never explore his story any further. So Mikola DLC, S tier, no doubt about it. Now what I mean by this question mark here would be a DLC that has pretty much nothing to do with any of the hints we have in the game. Nothing to do with any of these. It's a DLC that is completely almost like a spin-off of the story. Now, the reason this is a valid possibility is because this has kind of been the case in all of the past Souls games. Dark Souls 3 especially, and Dark Souls 2. And so if they were to follow that pattern, it wouldn't be surprising at all. So I'm going to put this in A tier. This is not really a topic for DLC that I would want. I think there's way too many loose ends in Elden Ring story that I want to see explored, like Mikola, like the Glomide Queen, like, Gwa like a Godwin. That for them to add even more spaghetti into the mix, I would not be too happy with. But the truth is, it's a very likely possibility. So something completely random, I'm going to put it in A tier, because it would follow suit for From, but personally, I don't really want it. Now, I had several people tell me they want an Age of the Stars continuation. Here's my problem with that. Ronnie's story is completed. Like I mentioned in the translation video, she's taking the Golden Order away from the Lands Between so that it can never be tampered with again, and nothing like the Shattering can ever happen again. And I feel like that is a perfect ending to the story we currently have. And for them to continue that, I think would be a waste. So I'm going to put this in D tier as well. Because personally, I don't think it's necessary. I think that's a completed story. And they don't need to explore that anymore. It's over and done. Up next, we have a DLC that's going to focus on completing the hand of the two fingers and the three fingers and restoring order. 
Garden of Eyes made this video a long time ago talking about the extra ending of Gideon's quest, where he modded the fingers together to make a full hand. Now, in Smotown's recent video, he made an argument of why this wouldn't really matter, why he doesn't believe they're really supposed to join together and make a five-fingered hand. And I tend to agree with him on that. I don't think there's really a point. I don't really know what the story implications of that would be. So for this, personally, I'm not interested in it. I don't think it's likely. So I'm going to put that in E tier. So what I mean by this picture here, and this is a picture of the uh, concept art from before the game came out. A lot of you guys talked about a DLC that takes place pre-shattering, before the events of the game, before the Badlands, before the Elden Ring was shattered. I'm not really sure that would make a good DLC, and here's why. There were several wars that happened before the Shattering, like with the Dragons, like the conflict between the Carrions and the Golden Order. However, I don't know why they would choose to explore that. Because it's talked about so much in the lore, that we have a good understanding of the story. Like I talked about with the Age of the Stars, there's so many other options for things that need to be explored over stuff that we already have a pretty good grasp on. So for a pre-shattering DLC, this is going in C tier. I would like to see other stuff explored over that because we already know enough. And all the mysteries that would be explored through that would involve the shattering itself. So unless we're taking an active role like in the plot of the Black Knives or whatever, I don't think it would really be worth it. Now the final one we have on the list today is a DLC surrounding Saint Trina. A character that's associated with sleep, but in a lot of cut content, it was discovered that Saint Trina was originally supposed to be Mikola. So this ties in with Mikola, therefore tying in with a Gideon DLC. And just like Mikola, this is a part of the story that is so hinted at, and is apparently just completely abandoned in the final version of the game. Now, Sekiro Dubi has been doing amazing work uncovering a cut questline revolving around Kale, and that ties in with Saint Trina. Now, when they make DLC, they tend to go off the building blocks that they already have. And so, I think this is a huge possibility that we get a DLC surrounding St. Trina slash Mikola slash Gideon. So this one, I'm going to put it in A tier and here's why. I'm not sure the DLC would necessarily focus on St. Trina as a character more than it would Mikola as a character. So because these are so closely overlapped, I'm going to put it in A tier rather than S. Just because I think Mikola himself would kind of take over on that end. But that's my list. I think it's a pretty solid list. I like a lot of these possibilities. I like these ideas that you guys had. And I want to know if you agree with me. Personally, my favorites on these lists are, of course, the Mikola DLC, Glomide Queen, and the Arenas. Either one of these I would be happy with. We gotta have the Arenas. I'm gonna be so disappointed if we don't get those, but... Yeah, I'm excited. I think a DLC announcement's coming pretty soon. I would bet a lot of money that we see it before the end of the year. Not a release, but an announcement. I was hoping we'd hear more by now, at least in the way of leaks, but there's just nothing going on right now. It's been so quiet, and uh, I'm not sure how to feel about that. But either way, though, let me know what you think about this list. Let me know if you're hyped for Elden Ring DLC, and this is going to be the place where you're going to hear the news about it first. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you in the next one.